friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Zephyr and I are here today to talk to you about an absolutely amazing book, but first we have a couple really, really fun things to share with you that actually really ties into the theme of today's book as well. So the first thing I want to share is that we have a brand new dragon to help us with our book reviews. This is Eureka very brand new dragon. He is still a baby and not quite ready to join us in the book reviews yet. He has to do a lot of training and learning like Zephyr has done to be able to help us out, but he will be joining us from time to time once he gets a little bit older. And we also have a, another dragon that will be joining us soon. This is the newest dragon egg. And as soon as this hatches, we will have another dragon too, which is very exciting. So the second thing I want to share with you is actually kind of a thank you um, and also ties into the theme of dragons, which you could probably tell is going to be the theme of today of the book we're going to be talking about, because there was a patron that came in last week to visit me at the library and I couldn't meet with her because I was busy doing other things, but she actually left dragon presents for me. This wonderful little dragon statue. I love him. Look at how cute. And this beautiful rock with a dragon egg peeking or a dragon eye peeking through. It looks like a dragon egg, doesn't it? That has a crack in it with the eye coming out. Absolutely love these gifts. They're so thoughtful and kind and amazing. And I just wanted to, since I couldn't see this patron when they came in, I just wanted to extend a thank you for these lovely gifts and for watching these videos. And in honor of that, we are talking about a dragon book today, which is perfect, perfect timing because I just finished one that is absolutely phenomenal that I can't wait to share. And that book is called So Let Them Burn. And this is by Camilla Cole. So Let Them Burn. So I was first drawn to this book because of how gorgeous the cover is, right? You guys all know how I am with covers. Look at these beautiful colors with the pink and you can see the dragons in the background flying. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Well, when this book first came out a few months ago, it was getting a lot of buzz and a lot of hype and everybody that was reading it absolutely adored it. So I finally got around to reading it um, last week and whew, what a book. This book is amazing. And I'm not just saying that because there are dragons in it. Um, of course, I love the aspect of it with dragons, but there's so much more to this book too. So this book is about a girl named Farron and her older sister, Alara. Now, Farron and Alara live on this island that just recently was able to break free of their colonizers. So they had been colonized by this bigger country, this Langley Empire, um, and they ruled them and they took over other countries by use of their dragons because dragons are in this book sometimes not super nice. And this empire uses dragons to enforce their rule on other countries. But Farron has been gifted this magic from the gods and she helped save her people and give them their freedom. That's already happened before this book is even taking place. So Farron is just super excited to, you know, be free of war. There's peace now. And she goes to this peace summit where uh, her queen is going to be talking with representatives from this other country. And something very unexpected happens. And the thing that is unexpected that happens is that her sister bonds with the enemy countries, one of their dragons. What? So now she has to go to this other country, to this Langlish empire to train at their dragon school to learn how to dragon ride and things like that. Now, you know, there's a lot of worry about this, you know, even though they're at peace now and, um, Farron's island has gained their independence there's still a lot of tension between the two countries and sending someone over there like that to learn how to ride dragons is like a very scary thing and Farron is trying to look up ways and figure out ways of how to break this bond um and you know she has to also try to figure out her and Alara her sister the story does take place between both of their points of view um about is the empire that they just recently won their freedom from planning something else. Are they planning some kind of other war to try to subjugate their people? So as you can see, this is not just a regular run of the mill fantasy book. You've got a lot of elements here. You've got colonization, you've got stuff about war, you've got stuff about freedom and family and culture. Um, and the one thing I wanna describe first of all is, you know, obviously the longer Alara is there, with her dragon. I loved the bond between her and her dragon. It was just absolutely amazing. I am such a sucker for books that involve 
people learning how to ride dragons and become dragon riders and like bond to them. I've been a fan of that ever since I first read Aragon many years ago. And so this book delivers on that, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and you know, as Alara is there, she realizes that there's more to just, this is a good, the good side of the war. And this is the bad side of the war. Like there's lots of different shades of gray, right? Between her people and between this other country. So there's that as well. I also really, really loved how well written this book was. Um, the island that Farron and Laura are from is based on Jamaica and it is just written so beautifully. Like the description, I've never been to Jamaica or any of those like islands. So, you know, I loved reading the description of how beautiful everything was and the foods and the, the people and everything. And I just wanna read you just a couple sentences from this one chapter. That was just so, so, so beautifully, beautifully written. She blinked and suddenly she was back in Blind Alley, a narrow gap between a restaurant and a clothing store that was nearly invisible until you were standing at the mouth of it, a popular location for neighborhood children playing hide and seek. The sticky mango juice on her fingers reminded her of the garden behind her house, of the bright green leaves of the cherry trees and the skeletal blue majos the rapidly spreading scarlet hibiscus flowers and the deep indigo vitae blossoms unfurling in the sun. Just absolutely gorgeous. All the descriptions of this book were so good. And I really loved also the way that this book handled war and the way that war affects both sides fighting it, right? Sometimes there is just no right and wrong and there's just all these shades of gray and, you know, war is terrible no matter what side you're on, right? And there's just one other passage I want to share that, that, you know, talks about that as well. That was one of life's most tragic secrets. War never actually ended. It survived in the lives destroyed by things large and small. The soldiers who nightmares haunted them, even with their eyes open, whose reflexes were forever set on kill, whose adjustments to peacetime came with the sobering knowledge that they were forever out of sync with a world that was desperate to move on from what they couldn't. The families who loved one, whose loved ones were the soldiers who never made it home, whose lives had been bisected into the before and after of having them around. The civilians who had lost mobility, lost property, lost sanity, or lost sleep to the shadow of a beast that announced itself with a roar before the roaring fire if you were lucky. So it doesn't matter that this is a fantasy story. This is something that anyone that's lived through war times can understand no matter what war it is, right? So I really love the way this book tackled all of these elements within a fantasy setting. And of course, obviously, I love the dragons too, because they were awesome. <laughs> Especially the one Alara is bonded to. I really loved her so much. So this book is going to be, I believe, a duology. This is the first one. Um, the second one is due out I believe early next year. So early 2025, possibly late 2024. I'll have to double check that. But the second book is coming out soon. So if you want a really awesome fantasy story that has such a unique story, has got dragons, it's got adventure, it's got some other deep, really awesome topics. So let them burn. Give this one a shot. You're going to absolutely adore it. Well, that's what we've got for you today. I hope that that book sounds really awesome and that you're super hyped to read it. Um, if so, please feel free to come check it out from Farmington Community Library. And also thank you so very much for watching, friends, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. <laughs>